oh my gosh, a female lead in a Star Wars movie. And then the trailer for Rogue One comes out, and it's another female lead. Oh my gosh, how unfair. We've had probably like two million straight film cinematic roles where men have been leads, and now we've done two in a row that are women. Uh, well, too bad. Oh well. Maybe there are more coming. I don't How know. How does it feel to be part of Star Wars? What did you enjoy most about the experience? Uh, I'm... Oh, God. <laughs> Star Wars is, is very, like, patriarchal, so it was kind of cool to have, like, this sort of woman-centered figure. People have told me that it's the gayest Star Wars, and I'm frankly into it. My daddy, daddy, dad, and the Bob Iger is all like, eh, no, it's going to be my dad, no, can not can Man, it is actually annoying having to come out with videos like this because, one, as you can see, I am not someone who is making extreme profit off my channel for raw dogging Star Wars, and two, I'm someone who, I don't want to say holds out hope for a better product because that is no longer the case. It's more of a mindset that I don't enjoy that Star Wars as a whole is a franchise that finds themselves in the gutter as deep as they are. And while obviously it's their own fault and people like Kathleen paved their own path of dumbassery when it comes to this IP, so I don't have to reiterate all of the terrible choices she's made for this brand. Just simply speaking from an audience member's POV that genuinely wants the show to surprise me in some way, shape, or form, it is so dumb and extremely disappointing because I simply can't believe that Disney Star Wars is really back at it again with the Toontown releases again. It's so interesting because for an idea that's been floating around the desolate wasteland of creativity that is Disney Studios, and for a show that's been in production for half of that time, you would think that we as a team, a conglomerate of people with IQs higher than what you would believe would be higher than a bag of Cheetos, could execute on their own idea better than this. Because at least for me, that is what is the most important aspect here, and the reason why the majority of Disney Star Wars productions have felt so half-assed and received such a lukewarm welcome from its core audience. It's the execution, not the idea. And the worst part is, is that I think this was the first time ever, at least mainstream-wise, so disregarding the novel, short stories, and video games, that we were expanding outside the timeline of the Skywalker saga, a true leap into the unknown, which in reality means that there were truly endless possibilities, stories, and visions to be shown and shared. But look at me, what a bloke I am, finding myself sitting at the clown table, yet again being asked to ingest half-baked, undercooked, and undignified slop on a plate as I get insulted for simply expecting, no, actually that's not even the right word, just me as an audience member simply asking for edible food for me and my mates like a little puppy. Imagine. Which is unfortunate because the premise for the show as a whole isn't even that bad. And while certain spoilers have allegedly been released for episode 3 that has some of the fandom feeling a certain way, again, as mentioned before, it's more of the execution for me, not the idea on paper. So I will judge that when I see it all play out. But with that being said, all of this yapping has just led us to the main point of the video, because for all of the negativity and positivity that you're going to see surrounding this show, as you can see and more than likely predicted with the dramatic divide in critical and audience scores, and let's not forget we still have 6 episodes left, this isn't a binge model, it could just be the fan apathy talking, but it has to be a serious question at this point, because has fan apathy actually killed this brand? Because let me tell you, I've really been sitting here thinking about how I'm not even quite sure who this show was even made for or who they're trying to appeal to. And I thought about that when I was asking my parents if they were going to watch the show. The most casual of upper 40, young 50 year old homies who hit wineries and Dave Matthews concerts. And let me tell you, my mom didn't even know what I was talking about and you could tell there was not a soul molecule in my pop's body that was interested in what my head ass was yapping on about. But the problem is, is that that wasn't always the case. I'm not going to give you guys an autobiography about my parents and the amount of Star Wars consumption they've managed to intake in their lives, but in order to really tie the whole point together with the cliff notes, it's been a pick your battle type of mentality after I would say, The Mandalorian Season 2, so you can manage your own timeline there. The main umbrella point in all of that 
is that Disney Star Wars at this point in its branding has grown and built up so much fan apathy that the casual audience has, in a way, become a non-factor. And with the first episode watch time and numbers as a whole further pushing my narrative, while at the same time adding additional questions like if this show was not made for casuals, then it would be fair to assume that you would think the show would be made for its core audience. But that doesn't really seem to be the case either seeing the audience reactions, as well as the press releases and seemingly active attempts to distance themselves from the quote-unquote toxic side of the Star Wars fandom, aka the core audience. So if the show was not made for the core audience and it was not made for the casuals, then what the fuck are we doing as a studio? From an audience's POV, it just seems like yet again, we have wasted valuable resources, time, and money on a product and people working on that product that lack the talent, intelligence, creativity, self-awareness, and pedigree to even be mentioning a brand such as Star Wars and adding it to their resumes. It just comes off as incredibly disingenuous and disrespectful to the people that you need in order to keep green lighting new products. But even more than that, because this is an aspect that I think has been plaguing not only Disney Star Wars, but the Hollywood landscape as a whole, and that is the fact that we cannot write for shit. Not intelligent characters, an engaging narrative, an interesting world, or even immersive stakes or tense situations. It all just circles back to the fact of my own personal mindset of execution over idea. As much of a great idea you might have, if you give a half-assed effort, or even if the effort isn't half-assed, you just simply have an end product that isn't all that in a bag of chips, then what could you realistically expect from the audience to keep bird-boxing themselves until their own mentality, standards, and expectations drop as low and become as toontown as their Hollywood supply? No, you wouldn't do that. That sounds insane, because in my eyes, that is not the way to go about your audience-to-studio relationship, and why I continue to reiterate that Disney Star Wars is by far the biggest brand in the deepest of sunken places, even when compared to their other top dogs such as the MCU or even the DCU. While there have already been so many videos on this platform that were already ready to call the alkalite poop on a screen, and many videos breaking down the little nitpicks here and there, the main umbrella problem that Disney has faced since the purchase of this brand is that we simply don't know what we're doing. We don't have the qualified people to write the scripts. We don't have the qualified people to enact competent choreography. We don't hire qualified people to write engaging or unique characters. We don't hire qualified enough people to entrust this brand to and to respect the groundwork that came before. We don't hire anyone that helps contribute to the cause or the narrative that Star Wars or the people involved is a brand that cares about its audience. And when you don't care about your audience and for lack of better words, alienate and divide your audience for years on end, what you have is the lowest rated and most importantly, the lowest watched production of the Disney Star Wars era. And to be honest, I don't really see how Disney expects that to change without accountability. And honestly, I would say an entire change in foundation at this point. But with a show like The Alkali, it really gives off the impression that Disney Star Wars isn't really in the game of reshaping their image. It's more of a stand on business mentality. But when that mentality is leading to a decline in business, then when does it end? I'm not quite sure, and I'm sure nobody really is. And while I'll obviously continue to watch The Alkali until it completes in order to see how the entire vision plays out, I can genuinely say that this was not a good start to a show, that kind of had everything going for it when it came to the idea, creativity, and the budget that was handed to it. And while this was definitely a more generalized video of me discussing the Star Wars brand and the direction it has and seemingly looks like it will continue to go in, I don't want to say that this will be my last Alkalite video before the finale, but if it is, well, I guess I'll see you in the finale. Hopefully this Toontown ass show gets a little better. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.